Now we'll discuss about the temporomandibular joint. This is temporomandibular joint part first. Here in this diagram, you can see this is lateral view of the skull. Here this is zygomatic arch. You will see here this part. This part is mandibular fossa. This is articular eminence, this is articular tubercle or articular eminence. Here is head of the mandible, this is head of the mandible. Temporomandibular joint is building. This is temporomandibular joint. If you enlarge this part, Diagram. This is a large part of this part. This is this is mandibular fossa. This is this is mandibular fossa. Here is articular eminence. This is articular eminence or articular tubercle. This portion is articular tubercle. This is articular tubercle. And here is this is tympanic plate. This is tympanic plate. This is squamo tympanic fissure. This is squamo. Tympanic fissure. This is stemo tympanic fissure. This is tympanic plate. Here is This portion from here to here. This diagram is magnified. Diagram of this. This is magnified here. So this articular surface is mandibular fossa, and this is articular tubercle or articular eminence. This is head of the mandible. This is head of the mandible. This is head of the mandible. This condyle is shape. It's anterior. Posterior dimension is anterior posterior dimension of the head is about 10 millimeter. 10 mm. And its transverse dimension is about 20 millimeter. This is neck. Here is capsule of the joint. This is capsule. This is capsule of the joint. So here, articular surface of the joint is superiorly mandibular fossa and articular tubercle or articular eminence, inferiorly head of the mandible. These articular surfaces are covered by Fibrocartilage. This is fibrocartilage. This is fibrocartilage which covers this 
articular surface. This is fibrofibrous. This articular surface is fibrocartic. This articular surface is fibrocartic. This joint is here. This capsule is internally lined by synovial membrane. This is synovial membrane. The type of the joint is synovial. It is atypical or typical. This joint is atypical because here articular surface is covered by fibrocartilage. In case of other joints, other synovial joints, articular surfaces are mostly covered by hyaline cartilage. If the articular surfaces are covered by hyaline cartilage, then joint is typical synovial joint. If articular surfaces are covered by fibrocartilage, then this is atypical synovial joint. This covering of this articular surface, it indicates the ossification of these two bones. These two bones ossify from membranes. And this membrane here forms the fibrocartilage. In case of typical synovial joint, the articular surfaces are covered by hyaline cartilage. It indicates that these bones are ossified from hyaline cartilage, or from hyaline model. So this is difference between atypical and typical synovial joint. So this joint is atypical synovial joint. This is atypical synovial joint. And variety of this joint is condylar. Here is condylar joint. So this is bicondylar joint. This joint cavity is divided into two parts. by an articular disc. This is articular disc which divides the joint cavity into two compartments. This is upper compartment, this is lower compartment. Due to this division, this joint is complex joint. So this joint is also complex joint because joint cavity is divided into two compartments by articular disc. If you see this articular disc, it is circular in shape. Here, if you make a diagram, this is circular in shape like this. Its peripheral part is thickened and central part is thin. The central part is thin and peripheral, peripheral part is thick. And this peripheral part is attached with the capsule here and it has two bands anteriorly it is thickened here this is anterior band there is posterior band this is anterior band this is posterior band and anterior to this anterior band this is known as anterior extension this is anterior extension, anterior extension, this is anterior band, this is posterior band, this is posterior band, this is intermediate fibers, so anterior extension, this is intermediate fibers and posterior, there is posterior extension, this is posterior. Here, this part is divided into two lamina. 
this is upper lamina this is upper lamina which is attached with squamous tympanic fissure this is upper lamina and other part this is lower lamina this lower lamina is attached with the neck along with the capsule here and between upper lamina and lower lamina there is a venous plexus here a venous plexus is present between these two lamina upper lamina is fibroelastic in nature and lower lamina is only fibrous elastic tissue are less here in comparison to this here this arrangement anterior and posterior band here fibrous tissue crimpled here and during pressure applied over here this fibers may elongate it and when pressure released these fibers recoiled so these fibers protect this so this is articular disc superior surfaces concavo this is concavo and convex this is concavo convex and inferior surface is concave now the capsule this is capsule which is attached superiorly with the articular tubercle and margin of the mandibular fossa here inferiorly attached with the neck here and it is internally lined by synovial membrane during child birth these are upper compartment and lower compartment these all are covered by synovial membrane like this gradually these articular surfaces after the movement of this uh, temporomandibular joint this joint is used by infants then gradually this become this appear like this and now the synovial membrane is only present the inner aspect of this capsule and here at the neck so and another important thing this articular disc is morphologically degenerated part of the lateral pterygoid muscle this is morphologically degenerated part of the lateral pterygoid muscle and the important thing after the capsule and this is capsule which covers the joint then this capsule is reinforced by a ligament known as lateral this is lateral temporomandibular ligament this reinforced the capsule this this is lateral temporomandibular ligament superiorly attached with the anterior margin of mandibular fossa and articular tubercle inferiorly attached with the neck and the ligaments which support this joint these ligaments one ligament is here from stylet process to the mandible this is stylo mandibular ligament from lateral surface of the stylet process to the angle of the mandible this is stylo mandibular ligament and the ligament you see in this diagram this is here is angle 
here is standard process. This is style that is surface of standard process. This is angle, this is stylomedular ligament. This ligament is accessory ligament. And this ligament is formed by deep cervical fascia, thickening of deep cervical fascia, which is present between two glands, two salivary glands. Here is submandibular salivary gland, here and here is pyotis salivary gland. So it lies between two glands. This is thickening of the cervical fascia. Investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. This is thickening of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. And the ligament, here in this diagram, here is spine of spinoid. This is spine of spinoid. And if mandible is here, like this. Here is position of the lingula. There is mandible stena. This is position of the lingula. On either aspect, here is this ligament. This is spheromandibular ligament. Here is, you can see, dotted, dotted. This ligament is spheromandibular ligament. It is attached superiorly with spine of sphenoid, inferiorly attached to the lingula of the mandible. This is spheromandibular ligament. So, this ligament and this ligament. Both ligaments are accessory ligaments and this ligament is remnant of dorsal part of metal's cartilage. This is spheromandibular ligament. So these are the ligaments which support the joint. This is lateral ligament, capsular ligament, lateral ligament, and spheromandibular ligament and stylomandibular ligament. So this is all about the first part of the first part of the temporomandibular joint red the red back so the red right like this ek ek bandh gir bhi nahi nahi 